So what is it? So basically it records the current state as a series of events or series of actions in an append only data store. So you can only append items or events into the data store, but you cannot modify the data in the event store. And here is what the data flow looks like. So you can see here, we have customer performs a series of actions. The customer added the shipping information, remove item one, remove or add item two, add item one, and created the cart. And these series of events will be added to the event store. And then what's going to happen is that if user wants to check the cart items, it will basically publish the events to external systems and applications. Here you can see we can also be able to replay events, query the current state of our current event store. Basically replay all the events that we have to find the current state. So what problems does this pattern solve? So one of them is events cannot be modified or cannot be changed. So if I want to assert events, then that event cannot be changed, it cannot be modified. So if I want to modify, this is what it looks like. So here you can see we have an example where we have an event called car created it, right? So we create a cart and that's the event. And let's say if user want to modify the state, then the only way we can do that is to append a new event. Here you can see we have an event called car deleted it. Add or append this event to the event store to modify the state of the event store. And another problem it solves is to avoid concurrent update conflicts. So let's say we have two events that are trying to modify the state of the event store. So what's going to happen is we have events and each event what can have a timestamp, right? So this event added first, and you can see the order is that this event append first and then this event append second. So this will basically avoid the concurrent changes because we're not updating the same event object um, at the same time, we're basically simply append new events based on the time when they arrive to the event store. And if we want to query the current state, we can basically replay all the events to query the current state. The other problem it solves is to provide a audit trail to monitor the actions or events. And it also help us monitor testing and debugging to make sure to understand where the system goes wrong and also help us to monitor the application performance. So now let's talk about some issues and considerations when using this pattern. So one of them is latency. So let's say we have a bunch of events, you can see a bunch of events trying to add on into the event store. Then we also want to update or add the new events to the materialized view and also external systems and applications. So there will be a delay for that. And the other issues and consideration is use snapshot to cache events. So let's say we want to query the current state. In this case, we have to replay all the events to find the current state of our event store, right? So the only way we can to avoid replaying every single time is we can basically cache this. So here you can see we have an example, right? This is our event store. And you can see the latest event is this one right here. So what we can do is that we can basically cache or have a snapshot of current state, right? In a separate store. So that every time when we want to query the current state, we don't have to iterate or replay all the events in the event store to find the state. We can basically find that from the product snapshot. And we can also have multiple snapshots for different intervals of our event store. So let's take a look at a real world example of using event sourcing pattern. So let's say we're trying to build booking management application. So there are two approach of how we store data in our data store. So one approach is to store the number of bookings and cancellation in a data store. And the other approach is to store a number of bookings and cancellation as events in a data in a data in event store using event sourcing pattern. So if we were to choose using approach one, there are some of disadvantages. In this case, let's say we have many concurrent changes. For example, one or more requests trying to book the same seat, for example, or one person is trying to remove a seat and the other one is trying to book a seat concurrently. In this case, or in general, a larger volume of requests to book seats. If we were to use approach one, we will occur this issue. But what we can do instead is we could use approach two which is event sourcing pattern to avoid this concurrent conflicts. So here is what it looks like for our data flow. So here you can see we have our user interface. 
which is trying to reserve two seats. And then what we do is we check to see if the seats are booked. We query to see the current state of how many seats we have. If we have the seats are available, then we're going to send an event to record the number of seats that are being reserved, that were reserved. And then the system will append the event to the event store because events are immutable or cannot be changed. So there will not be concurrent conflicts and user trying to modify the state concurrently. In conclusion, as you can see, event sourcing pattern is very, very useful. Uh, we should consider using this pattern when we want to avoid concurrent update conflicts. And we should also consider using this pattern if we want to keep track of our history about why each state, why the states are changed. Not consider using this pattern when we want low latency. Um, and the other thing we should not use this pattern if we don't need to replay actions.